33-year-old Kayla Kelly hasn't been seen or heard from for at least a week. The Collin County Sheriff's Office says friends reported her missing on January 11th and now the search is on to find her. We have been deployed on that particular case two times, once this past Friday and again yesterday afternoon. Paul Lake is founder and executive director of Search One Rescue Team, a nonprofit which assists law enforcement in finding lost and missing people using trained dogs and volunteers. He says the Collin County Sheriff's Office and Texas Rangers asked for their help, but wouldn't specify where they searched in order to protect the case. But he says any information from the public can help piece the puzzle together. Well, typically, uh, especially in a profile similar to this one, that's where the final information will come from to solve the case is uh, someone has seen something that maybe they didn't even know they saw or knew something that uh, they didn't realize was pertinent to the case. On January 11th, a Collin County, Texas woman, 33-year-old Kayla Kelly, was reported missing after family and co-workers failed to get in touch with her for several days. The next day, her body was located in a field in a shallow grave in a wooded area of Grand Prairie near Kingswood Boulevard and Prairie Oak Boulevard. Her burn vehicle was also located nearby. Police found a body here in Grand Prairie, and sources indicate that that may be the body of missing 33-year-old Kayla Kelly. This morning, I did reach out to the Grand Prairie Police Department to confirm whether or not it is Kelly, but have not heard back. But this is what we know. The location where police found the body is just a mile away from Oscar Ferguson's home, the man accused of kidnapping her. Overnight, a possible lead in the missing Kayla Kelly case. Police say a woman's body was found in Grand Prairie, and there's a possibility it could be Kelly. This is a very big story. A lot of neighbors out here have heard of this story because it involved someone who lived not too far from them. Latoya Lane told me that she had been reading about this and about Kelly's disappearance. And when we told her why we were out here and the possibility that this could be Kelly's body, she told me she couldn't believe this was all happening on her front lawn. Take a listen. This is very frightening that I was following this story um, since it happened. And um, for the finish line to be, uh, um, you know, just right here in my front door, it's, it's just, it's very frightening. And it's just seem unreal right now. An investigation into the case revealed that Kayla had been dating a man by the name of Kevin, whom she met on a dating site. Recently, she discovered that Kevin, whose real name was in fact Acosta Ferguson, was married. Upon finding out the news, Kayla shared with several friends that she planned on blackmailing Acosta, threatening him via text to inform his wife that he had been having an affair. Kayla Kelly's friends are the ones who told Collin County deputies that Kelly had a boyfriend at the time of her disappearance and she had just recently became upset because she found out that he was married. According to investigators, Kelly only recently found out Ferguson was married and he never even told her his real name. January 11th, Kelly's friends and co-workers reported her missing to the Collin County Sheriff's Office after not hearing from her for several days. Deputies then went to Kelly's McKinney duplex for a welfare check. Kelly was not home, but her dog was, and it didn't have any food or water. Detectives then went through Kelly's phone records, pointing them to conversations with Acosta Ferguson, who went by the name Kevin Brown. Ferguson claimed his car was at Kelly's house because he was hiding it from his wife, and he allowed deputies to look through his phone. There they saw text conversations where she threatened to tell his wife about the affair. Ferguson's wife was interviewed, and she told detectives she got a text message from an unknown number advising they needed to tell her something. She said she never responded, and when detectives asked to see her phone, it was broken. Monday, we visited the Grand Prairie home shared by Ferguson and his wife, but there was no answer. On January 13th, investigators talked to Ferguson, who admitted that he was dating Kayla, but said the last time he saw her was when she dropped him off at work. Ferguson told investigators she never came back to pick him up like they had planned. On January 14th, an analysis of Ferguson's phone records showed him in the area of Frisco, where investigators found Kayla's burned car on a dead-end dirt country road. Surveillance footage also shows smoke in the area during the early morning hours. Records then say Ferguson got a ride from a rideshare service back to his home in Grand Prairie. 
Ferguson was arrested that day for kidnapping. A deeper analysis of Ferguson's phone records showed him leaving work on January 10th and going to a wooded area near his home in Grand Prairie. On January 18th, investigators then went to the area and found Kayla's body in a shallow grave. Ferguson's wife had recently reported her vehicle as stolen. Investigators found that same vehicle in the area near Kayla's residence. Inside the vehicle, they found duct tape and gloves. During an interview, Ferguson told investigators that he met Kayla online and they began dating over the summer. He said he initially used a fake name, but that she eventually figured out his true identity. And we begin tonight with breaking news. In the last 90 minutes, we learned a body has been found just minutes away from the home of the man accused of kidnapping a missing Collin County woman. We're going to zoom in a bit here for you. We have a really good picture of this. Investigators are focusing on this wooded area. There's lamps back there. We've seen investigators come back and forth with shovels, buckets, a tarp. And like we said, they've told us that they have found the body of a female, but they haven't confirmed that it is Kelly's. But the kicker is, is that it is less than one mile from the home of Ocaster Ferguson, who is accused right now of kidnapping Kelly, and he's jailed in the Collin County Jail as we speak. Kelly and Ferguson were dating. Ferguson is married, and per investigators, some of the last con uh, conversation that they had over the phone, Kelly said that she was going to alert Ferguson's wife of the affair that they were having if he didn't, quote, respond to her. Kelly's car was found burned out, as you said, in Frisco by investigators. Few seem to travel down this dead end Dirt County Road in Frisco. It's becoming a dumping ground, sheltered on either side by utility equipment and woods. And it is on this road where court documents say 32-year-old Ocaster Ferguson dumped Kayla Kelly's vehicle and set it on fire. Court records obtained by Fox 4 Friday for the arson charge say Ferguson obtained a lighter and a gas can on January 10, 2023, during the day. A separate set of court records say Kelly's phone was last used that night at 6.59 p.m. The last location of her phone was in the area of Ferguson's work in the Dallas area. Records say he stated he was with Kelly on January 10th and went to her residence after she picked him up from work around 11 o'clock. Even though phone records suggest he went to his residence in Grand Prairie before heading to Kelly's. NTTA records show Kelly's vehicle traveled north on the North Dallas Tollway into North Frisco in the early morning hours. Investigators say cell phone records put Ferguson in the area of Kelly's burned vehicle and that surveillance footage shows smoke in the early morning hours. Records then say Ferguson got a ride home from a rideshare service back to his home in Grand Prairie. A witness eventually reported the burned vehicle was found on the 12th, one day after Kelly was reported missing. Crews discovered Kelly's body Wednesday in a shallow grave not far from Ferguson's Grand Prairie home. Investigators have not shared what led them there. This is an ongoing homicide investigation, so there are many aspects of the case that uh, we're not ready to disclose at this time. We had hoped for a different outcome, uh, and like her family, we were devastated uh, when uh, it ended up that we found her body. I live just right up the street, right in the neighborhood. Sharon Brown visited the site Thursday afternoon. She brought flowers and two balloons. One she says she sent to Kayla. From one sister to another sister, I wanted to, the, you know, I wanted to know that she was not alone, that we are going to remember her, and we sent enough flowers to heaven in her name. 33-year-old Oscar Ferguson has been charged with kidnapping, arson, and murder, although he could face more charges. He is currently being held at the Collin County Jail on a $1 million bond. According to the Tarrant County Medical Examiner, the exact cause of Kayla's death is still pending. The case remains ongoing.